Whether you're a hobbyist programmer or a professional developer, whether you're working on video games, software applications, or websites, everyone doing any sort of development should become acquainted with a source control solution. While your university may not teach you about source control, it is widely used in the professional world. If you ever find a company not using source control for their software development, you could possibly question their competence as a software development house. Learning how to use source control will make your life easier, whether you're programming for fun, in college, or working somewhere. Programmers hate doing things manually, and usually invent software to automate tedious or error-prone tasks. You might use build scripts to compile your project for multiple platforms, you might use unit tests to test your software on a functional level, and you might use source control to make sure you have regular backups of your code and that everyone working on a project can do so in harmony and without stepping on each other's feet. Source control, otherwise known as revision control or version control, is a tool to help you manage and keep track of your source files and projects. With source control, you set up a repository where you store your source code. Anytime you make a change to a source file on your computer, you can commit those changes back to the repository. This allows you to make a backup of older source files. This allows you to keep track of changes you've made over time. This allows you to pull down the source code from another machine easily and this allows you to work with other people on a project simultaneously. Have you ever worked on a project and made a big change that broke everything? Maybe you didn't have any backups and weren't sure what exactly you did to break it. If you were using source control, you would be able to see the changes in your source files over time and who made the changes. You can view this or pull down the old version of your files anytime. Whether you're working alone or in a team, source control is handy because it stores the source code on a server. You can access your repository from other locations and pull down your source code so you can continue editing elsewhere. If someone is given permission to access your repository, they can also pull down your source files and work on it with you. Source control is a must-have tool, whether you're working solo or with a team. With source control, multiple people can work on the same project simultaneously, and the source control solution will handle the logistics of putting files in the correct area and making sure everybody's code is up to date. Your source control solution won't be updating the source files on your machine automatically. Once you run a pull or update command, it will bring down the latest code and prepare it to merge with whatever you've been working on. Similarly, you can work on code on your machine without affecting other developers' work. Once you're ready to submit your completed code, you can push or commit your code to the main repository. One feature of source control is that when multiple people are working on the same file, your source control solution will help you automatically merge those two files together. Sometimes the changes are unclear to the computer, so you have to merge the code on your own. This usually happens if you're merging two source files that changed in the same section of code. But for the most part, merging happens automatically and you don't have to worry about it. Maybe you and your team are working on a game. Let's call it Pyro the Wyvern. There is a core repository that holds all of the current working source code. It has been decided that you're going to add a feature for a racing minigame. However, while you're in the middle of working on it, you don't want to make any of the core game code broken or unplayable, with bugs you may introduce or incomplete code that you might want to store in the repository. With branching, you can create a branch of the main repository and name it something like Racing. Then you can continue pulling the latest source code from the core repository while simultaneously working on your racing features without affecting other people's code. When you're done with the racing feature, you can merge your branch back into the main repository and close the racing development branch. Say that you find a cool open source project online, like someone else's map editor. You can fork that person's repository and pull it down to your computer to make changes to. Forking is different from branching since you cannot commit code to the original repository unless the owner adds you to the team. 
You can, however, create a fork of their repository and continue adding features, which are somewhat unofficial. An example of forked software is LibreOffice. Many of you might know about OpenOffice, an open source alternative to Microsoft Office that was maintained by Sun. However, there was concern about the lack of development for OpenOffice, so a fork of the software was made and development continued as LibreOffice. OpenOffice and LibreOffice are now separate software products, though they share a common base. If you make a fork of someone else's project, some source hosting websites will allow you to make a pull request. This means that your feature changes will show up under the original repository's pull request list. Therefore, when someone is using the original project, they can look at the pull request list and choose additional features for that project. When you commit your changes to your repo, the source control system automatically keeps track of who changed what. In Git, there's this handy little feature called Blame, where you can view a source file that lists who updated what line by line. There are a lot of source control solutions available out there with varying features. Some examples of source control solutions are SVN, CVS, TFS, SourceSafe, StarTeam, Git, and Mercurial. How do you choose which one to use? Subjective Zone! I'm going to tell you my personal opinion here. I have used SVN, TFS, Git, and Mercurial. Of these, I would greatly discourage using SVN or TFS, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Use Git or Mercurial. Git and Mercurial are distributed version control systems, while SVN and TFS are centralized. What I love about Git and Mercurial is that you essentially have a local repository and the main repository that everybody shares. You can commit as many times as you want to your local repository while working on some code, and once you're done with it, you can push it to the main repository. With TFS and SVN, anytime you commit, it goes to the main repository. What if you're working on something for days, and you want to back that up but not throw incomplete code into the main repository? You could set up a redundant source control system locally to act as your private repo, and in TFS you can shove your changes, but I think both of these solutions are just working around a problem that should be solved by the version control itself. My personal opinion of TFS shelve sets are that they are awful. When working professionally, it was always hard to work with a team on a feature while having to share our work with shelve sets. The main thing that would make me tear my hair out is that if coworker Bob had changed object.h, and I had a changed version of object.h in my shelf set, Bob couldn't pull my object.h changes. TFS won't let you merge from shelf sets. Git and Mercurial alleviate these headaches. While you're working on code and it's not complete, commit to your repo, and when you're finally done with that code, push to the main repo. You can set up a repository for Git, Mercurial, or anything else on your local machine and use it that way, or on a server computer on your network. I prefer to use websites that will host my projects for me, since it's available online and I trust a company's servers more than my own. There are a lot of places out there who will host your projects for free, provided that the project is open source. These websites are GitHub, Bitbucket, SourceForge, and Google Code. These sites also provide handy issue tracking, where you can keep track of bugs or just make a list of to-do features for your project. They also give you a wiki, so you can add documentation for your project online. If you're a bit more private, you can still get free hosting for your projects. 
Also, keep in mind that some websites also give free hosting if you have a university email address. When I want to work on a project that isn't open source, and keep it private to myself and maybe a small team, I host it on Bitbucket. Bitbucket will host your projects for free, so long as your team is no bigger than five people. When you set up a project on a site like Bitbucket or GitHub, you'll be able to view information about your project from your web browser. Here is my rarinth repository on GitHub. It's open source, so it's currently not complete. You can see the main page where a list of files in the repository are shown. There is also a readme on this page with information about the project. I can click on any folders or files to open them in the web browser and preview them. I can also view the blame notes, where you can see when I changed what. Since I'm the only person who worked on Rarinth, it only shows my username. I can also view the history of a file, and see a list of commits I made while working on this project. Under Issues, you can see the to-do list I had set up for different features I wanted to get done. Under Wiki, you can view some information I wrote about the project. On the main page of this GitHub project, you will see a link that will allow you to clone this repository onto your own computer. You can make changes to my code and commit to your own fork, but you cannot commit to the original repository unless I give you that access. Next time, I will go over how to actually use Git in practice. You can use Git from the command line interface, or through various user interfaces available, so both might be useful to learn. <laughs>